Dr. Philly, thank you so much for joining us. Our topic is a mouthful. Mycobacterial lung infections, big, big name for a serious problem. So let's just get right out of the box some definitions here. What is a non-tuberculous mycobacterium or NTM infection? And non-tuberculous mycobacteria are in the same family as tuberculosis, which many of us have heard of and it's been a common problem around the world. Um, a decreasing problem actually in the United States, but non-tuberculous mycobacteria are in the same family. They're just not contagious. What is, what kind of an infection is it? What happens? What does it do? Well, particularly it affects the lungs. If you have a depressed immune system, it can affect other parts of the body and spread to other parts of the body. But typically pulmonary or lung non-tuberculous mycobacteria affects the lung and is an infection that causes lung damage and symptoms. What causes it? Well, the mycobacteria itself is found in the environment, so it's in the soil and in the water. And so we inhale this mycobacteria, it sets up shop in our lung tissue and is a very slow growing infection that causes problems over time. In, our, um, in most people's cases, our immune system deals with it? Most people with an intact immune system, meaning their immune system functions well, um, may have a transient infection, may not notice it at all. But in certain hosts or in certain humans, these infections actually cause quite a bit of problems. In many of these patients, we actually don't understand why that's the case. You touched on this a moment ago. Is the infection caused by NTM limited to just lungs? It is not. As if, if you have, again, if your immune system is working or intact, then the, the infection usually is just found in the lungs. And we actually see two types of individuals or patients that have this type of lung disease, usually those that have smoked for many years and have lung tissue that's been damaged by the effects of cigarette smoking. And then there's a second type of individual um, that's quite a bit more interesting in my personal opinion, and those are elderly women that are usually thin usually of Caucasian descent, usually postmenopausal, that for unclear reasons have these types of infections. And usually these women cough for many, many, many years before seeking medical advice at the right place to identify what um, infection is causing their trouble. You touched on this just a second ago, but let's color it up a little bit. Are there common risk factors for developing NTM? Who gets this disease? There are people that get this disease with genetic risk factors, things such as cystic fibrosis, um, other types of genetic conditions that are quite a bit more rare. There are other allergic components. Again, I touched on the fact that people that smoke cigarettes can have this disease, and then there's many individuals that get this we don't understand, and we term that idiopathic. And those specifically are the women that I was speaking of earlier. Why is it called non-tuberculous mycobacterium? Is, is this disease contagious? Those are great questions. Non-tuberculous mycobacterium belong to a family of, um, again, uh, bacteria that are kind of cousins or in the same family as tuberculosis. So we've chosen to lump them as tuberculosis, which is a contagious health, a public health threat, and then the non-tuberculous mycobacteria are typically thought of as not contagious. There's over 150 different types of species, so you can imagine studying this can become quite complicated, many of which, fortunately, do not cause true infection in humans. But we lump them in these categories so that we can uh, effectively study them and, and classify them. To answer your last question, no, non-tuberculous mycobacterium are not thought to be contagious. What symptoms are we looking for? Usually, Many people present with cough, which is unrelenting. Oftentimes they cough up sputum or mucus. Oftentimes they do not. Sometimes they have weight loss that have, has occurred over a long period of time, fatigue, night sweats. Sometimes we also see fever. How is NTM diagnosed? How do you arrive at a diagnosis? Usually the patients I see have come to me with a diagnosis after many years, but the way that we diagnose it is through a sputum culture. So you would cough up mucus into a container. We look at that under a microscope and grow it in the lab, and that's how we identify these types of infections. Also often people have characteristic changes on either a chest x-ray or a CAT scan of their lungs that can also give us clues as to the diagnosis. 
armed with a diagnosis, how do you treat it? We usually say that people require um, three things to be treated, and that is they have to have a diagnosis through their sputum, the CAT scan or chest x-ray that we've done has to have changes, and then people have to have symptoms. And when those three things are in place, we treat these infections typically with three antibiotics given at least 18 to 24 months. So it's quite a long treatment process. At the end of all this, will the treatment cure the infection? We often have very good success to um, clear this type of infection, but again, for the same reason that we don't always understand why this person got the infection in the first place, for those same reasons, they could, they could get another infection and it could be a problem throughout their lives. Besides taking antibiotics, if we have this, this disease, besides taking antibiotics, what else can a, a patient do to improve symptoms? Well, um, there's, there's some ways to improve symptoms and there's some ways to try to prevent uh, obtaining another infection. Um, as I mentioned, this is carried in water and so we, we believe that this could be inhaled through steam. So avoiding steam showers, facials, saunas, things of that nature is very important. We often tell people to turn up the hot water heaters in their homes at times when they have this type of infection and then just to use common sense. Um, to improve symptoms, usually the antibiotics do help, but again, because it's a slow-growing bacteria, it does take many months to actually feel better. And what happens if I choose not to be treated at all? We often do wait or choose not to treat patients. Again, it's according to how they feel and if, if their symptoms warrant, again, the risk of taking antibiotics for a prolonged period of time. So there really is an art to studying this, and that's why I've made it my life's work. Very well. What about just not having the disease at all? Are there steps we can take to prevent getting NTM? Oh, not necessarily. Some of it, we don't understand exactly how, how people get it in the first place or what it is about the human host or the human person themselves that allows the infection to set up shop and, and to sometimes um, cause these types of symptoms. So there's no real way to, to prevent you from getting an infection uh, before you have it. Doctor, I learned a lot, and we thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.